Released the weekend before July 4th in the year 2000, this Roland Emmerich historical action film doubled its $110 million budget. Mel Gibson stars as a peaceful farmer living in South Carolina in 1776, who is compelled to lead the colonial militia after a sadistic British officer needlessly murders his son. Suddenly changing from a relaxed and loving individual to a violent soldier hell-bent on revenge, Gibson provides a convincing and emotionally strong performance that drives the almost three-hour movie. When he storms out of his burning house carrying a literal handful of weapons, it's obvious he means business and has passed the point of no return. As the determined father leads his ragtag group of men into battle, he proves to be a resourceful and resilient strategist, often outsmarting the British, including one memorable moment when he participates in a prisoner exchange using straw dummies. The talented ensemble supporting cast includes Heath Ledger, Jason Isaacs, Chris Cooper, René Auberjonois, Tom Wilkinson, Donald Logue, Adam Baldwin, and dozens of other faces that populate the battlefields. The men and the few ladies present do a fine job with the period-accurate dialogue, but only Isaacs really stands out from the crowd with his impossibly despicable portrayal of the fiendish redcoat. Overtly reluctant to war with England, our titular hero warns early that an elected legislator can trample a man's rights as easily as a king can. Besides giving us insight into Gibson's intellect and understanding of 18th century politics, that line is also a poignant commentary on today's culture, some 200 years later. Sergeant, there's no need for you and your men to die. Leave the wagons and go. This is the King's Highway, and I advise you and your men to make way. On the right. Present. Many of the most gruesome deaths happen just out of view, but the R-rated picture still exhibits some decidedly graphic moments, particularly those involving Gibson's trusty hatchet. But as far as war movies go, the on-screen brutality is rather tame. Emmerich certainly has a flair for the ostentatious and grand, delivering on his trademark by giving us sweeping anamorphic shots in beautiful slow motion. Sometimes this big Hollywood style works and is suitably appropriate for the epic action on screen, but other times it feels particularly cheesy and unnecessary. The soundtrack by the immensely prolific John Williams mayn't be his best work, but the pulsing mix of strings and woodwinds provide a lively and patriotic backdrop to the adventure. The leisurely paced narrative tends to repeat itself, but comes marching back with an exciting final battle scene that unfortunately is also a complete work of fiction. Although it functions as a poor and generally inaccurate account of the actual Revolutionary War, HBO's impressive John Adams miniseries is far superior in that regard, the film does contain authentic and realistic costumes and locations. Despite its many redeeming qualities, the film will always share unavoidable and unfavorable comparisons to Gibson's earlier war epic, Braveheart, which has a much stronger execution of a near-identical story involving lost love, flag-carrying speeches, and ragtag heroes taking on the mighty British Empire. Perhaps that's why that movie won five Academy Awards, whereas this colonial counterpart could only secure three nominations. Given their similarity, I'll always choose the best picture to rewatch on a lazy summer afternoon. But this movie still has a great deal of entertainment value. The Patriot, Braveheart clone, delivers American thrills. Now let's check out your thoughts from the YouTube comments. Our scores for The Patriot, a double seven. You enjoyed the action and Gibson's acting, but faulted the predictable story and overly patriotic delivery, ranking this a cool. I completely agree, a very entertaining film, just a familiar one. I thought it was cool as well.